What's up guys, it's Patrick from Purple Park Studios and today I'm going to show you how to create three procedural, fully customizable VFX right in Blender. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to frame one and get out of my camera mode, hit A, X, and delete everything. So I'm just left with the blank scene in Blender here. Now if you don't have Blender, you can go to www.blender.org and download Blender. It's free. If you already have Blender, then you're a step ahead. So let's get into making the VFX. All we're really going to need is just three nodes and a UV sphere. So we can get the sphere by hitting Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere. You don't really have to. I'm just going to shade it auto smooth just because it's a habit. And I'll scale it up a little bit. Next, I'll go to my shading tab right here. So what I like to do in the shading editor is the first thing I like to do is hit this drop down arrow and just turn this world opacity to zero. So this is the first effect we're going to be creating today. But in order to make this look cool, I'm going to do a couple things. First, we're going to grab this, hit R, Y, and 90 just to rotate it so that it's facing in the upward direction. And then we're going to go up here to our render properties tab and turn on bloom so we get that cool glowing look. So the first thing we need to do is we need to hit new. This will give us a new material and by default in Blender we get the principled BSDF plugged into a material output node. If you don't know what nodes are, well these are what nodes are and you can click them with the left mouse arrow and then clicking and holding you can drag them around. You can add a node by hitting shift A, searching for it and typing in the name of it or just shift A and manually surfing through. We're only going to need three additional nodes aside from what Blender gives us in order to create the effects you saw at the beginning of this video. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit shift A and we're going to get a noise texture. So we're actually going to grab the factor of this noise texture and we're going to plug it right into the alpha here on our principle. And it's not really going to do anything at first and what we need to do is with this sphere selected we can go over here to the material properties tab just scroll down here with your middle mouse and change this blend mode change it over to alpha blend. And once the shader loads, you can see it's kind of doing something, but we need another node to go in between these two. So we'll hit shift A and we're gonna add a color ramp. So we can left click that color ramp and just left click to place it and it'll drop it right in there like that. And with this color ramp, we can grab this black slider here and you can see if I turn it down like that, it's giving me transparency in certain areas. And likewise, if I bring this white slider up, I get a more clear and crispy picture here. So we do need to add one more node here, but before we do that, let's go ahead and get some of that glowing effect going on here. So if you look over here to, at the emission on the principal shader, you'll see it's dark right now. So we need to left click that and we'll just drag this all the way up. And you can take this emission strength and just turn that up to whatever you'd like just start getting some glowing effect there. For now, I'm just gonna set mine to about 44, or let's go 22, just so we can see a bit clearer. And of course, you can change the color here. So I'm gonna give this a, a nice blue shade at the moment. Something like that should be nice for now. The very next node we need is a gradient texture. So we can do Shift A and start typing in gradient, left click, and left click to place it. From there, we're gonna change this from linear over to easing, and we're gonna grab the color and plug it into the vector of our noise texture. And boom, you'll see we have this effect. But if I hit the space bar, nothing happens. For those of you who don't know, if you go to the layout here, you'll see you have a timeline down here. You can change this scene frames to whatever. Normally by, normally in Blender, by default, it's set to 250. So we'll just set it to 250 for now. And then if you hit the space bar, it plays an animation. But as you can see, if I go back to my shading editor and hit spacebar, there is no animation playing. Now what I don't want to do is I don't want to add a bunch of keyframes to this noise texture and make things complicated. I want to do this in a very easy way so that no matter if I change my scene frames to 500 or 700 or 20 or whatever it is, that the animation plays nicely and I don't have to worry about animating a bunch of keyframes because quite frankly that can be annoying when you're trying to make some cool abstract art. So there's a really easy solution for this. On our noise texture we can just go to 3D, left click that, and go down to 4D. This gives us the dimension of time. You'll see that this W appears here and this is time. This is what we're going to use to animate this sphere. And we can do this really easily by just left clicking and typing in hashtag frame Holding down shift, I'll hit the eight for the asterisk for times 0 0.01 and then enter. 
So hashtag frame asterisk point zero one enter. Now, if I hit the space bar, you'll see that I have this cool effect going, which I can then grab and rotate or tap into edit mode, grab these vertices here, pull them out. You know, you get the point. There's a lot of cool stuff you can start to do with this effect. Well, so now what about the cool fire looking effect we saw here earlier? It's actually really simple. So now that we've gone ahead and done all this work, all we have to do is grab our gradient texture and unhook it from the noise texture. From here, we can grab the distortion and turn that up just a bit. And you can feel free to do whatever you want with this. And this is where it gets really fun because you can just start adding nodes, plugging things in, moving values and really experimenting, pull, moving sliders, seeing what looks good, trying stuff out. And that's the fun of it. And then we can go ahead and change this color to a more fire like looking thing right there. So that looks pretty fiery. And if we hit the space bar, now we have a cool procedural fire looking effect. And you can get way more in depth with this by adding nodes and plugging things in. As you can see in this scene here, the fire that is in this scene, I actually used a similar process to create. It's a bit more advanced, but maybe if you leave a comment about it, I can make a video about it later down the road. And for our last effect, as I promised, I said I would show three in this video. We're going to hit Shift A and we're going to add a Musgrave texture in. And we'll grab the height from the Musgrave texture and plug it into the vector of the noise texture. And you'll see I have this really cool effect here. And we can go ahead and start playing with the scale till we get something we like. And I haven't even really experimented too much with this one yet. So that's kind of cool. But this one here looks really trippy. And then you can start playing with like dimension, this lucronicity that kind of looks like pretty wild. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If you found it helpful, don't forget to hit subscribe, most importantly. But you can also leave a comment and a like. Let me know what you think. Let me know if there's something else you'd like to see. I make videos all the time, and I want to do stuff that's going to benefit and help people. So thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next video. You see here, kid? You got to just go for it. Don't think about what comes after or what came before. You just got to bend your knees, take a deep breath, and jump. And you might think, what if I fall? Well, what if you don't? What if you fly?